So, the music doesn't need any explanation. It is completely direct. And when it reaches, it reaches. But um, this um, discourse is through the music to really um, touch upon, embrace is maybe a big word, touch upon um, issues which were sometimes left out or considered less important because they belong to uh, people, cultures uh, who are too distant and not really drinking Coca-Cola. Actually, everybody is drinking it these days, but you know what I mean. So um, the idea is to journey through um, making music in different ways and its meaning and how it gets into our lives. Um, what is a um, few images I am um, uh, showing show that in uh, traditional societies and you know in indigenous cultures today, the children are always around instruments, music, performance, rituals, festivals, and they are part of it. They are carefully watching because by watching and concentrating, the learning really happens through imitation and of course mirror neurons, which we'll touch in a minute. And um, here, what is very interesting in this photograph, right on the um, left, it's a mature person sitting, watching, <clears throat> and one group is performing and other is watching. And in the next festival, they might change the place, but the person holding the place, the wisdom holder, the one who is with a presence, with deep experience, nourishing the place. It's what is of interest here, because from that place comes the true music training. And um, the people carry it in the same outfits as the people around them or by dressing differently. But the skills of music need at least 10 years of three hours a day to be the master of an instrument. And this is a uh, native, um, um, really old photograph, um, might have been even a postcard, but it is of a music workshop among the Native Americans, which is very, very important. And the shape of a large uh, a meeting place, it's circular and significant, um, even cosmologically significant. Um, this photograph is here because it's Caribbean memory of Africa. And in some places, some anthropologists have found almost identical beliefs, um, similar sounds, if not the same instruments, even the um, outfits. But what is important, attentively, there is a little boy who is watching and participating, held by an adult. So, as I said, the mastery takes considerable amount of time and enormous amount of sacrifice, dedication, sweat, loneliness, to I be able that. to touch the hearts and feed. And this is one of the last uh, 
uh, a chic, a chic uh, web cell, um, a blind uh, musician who was recorded, he was in the 30s, 40s, but with complete dedication and essential commitment to the music. So this is what one of my favorite sequences, and some of you have seen them in other lectures, but it is the summary of the, um, the zygot, the zygot developing, the history of humanity welded into all of us. It's not just our parents in the chromosomes and uh, DNA, but it's really the entire history, the memory of humanity is there, working its way. And already at one millimeter, the future body begins to emerge, to resemble. And at six weeks, this is, this is older, but at six weeks, the first sense, the hearing begins to develop. And the hearing is, fully developed in six months. The child can orientate in space, which helps later to face the right direction to exit. But more than that, it recognizes the sound of the mother and the other sounds, of course, the father. And we have made experiments with people to hold their hand and sing, asking their mothers to do that. And it did awaken a memory in them of remembering that kind of sound. So hearing, it's our first emergence of an sapient consciousness. It doesn't only help us to emerge, but it also later help us in many, many ways. But initial trauma of separation, of leaving that secure place is a trauma which is meant mm -hmm. to be experienced and lived through. When um, uh, Freud and Freudians talk about trauma they always exaggerate and say trauma leads to um, psychosis. But us surviving and growing through the trauma, traumas, and some of them, you know, losing a relative, losing someone, it's death is part of the experience, bereavement heartbreak as teenagers or at any other time. All of those things are meant to be. So the birth trauma is helped by all kinds of mythologies, symbologies, totems to integrate, to help people integrate into their existence towards something which is socially so essential, the recovered closeness. After a while, through care, through recognizing the sound, through smells and everything, the human being is held. And in some situation, not, but something holds them. Sometimes people hold themselves when there is not um, this kind of moment. But the whole social thing, the music, the theater, the reading, the eating together, the festivals, are the forms of recovered closeness. It's always lost and it's always found. One of our colleagues, uh, a controversial colleague, uh, Jaeger Raznikov, has um, uh, explored the caves with a natural sound. He's not using any mechanical instrument, 
not just clapping, okay, or using some buzz, buzz, buzz to measure only one sound, a frequency, or several, but he sings. He is a singer, he is an anthropologist, and has also trained in the Siberian animal imitation singing, which uh, brings, um, which is their training, not scales, but imitating sounds of nature. So he, in the caves, discovered he crawled in the dark and sung, and then he discovered with a flashlight. So when there was an echo or a sound, he put the light and sure enough, there were signs on the wall, either on the ceiling, on the wall, um, often red dots, but also complicated images at the special places of sound. Sometimes he saw some animals, this is not the one, but um, um, which he can imitate the, the voice. He imitated the voice and there was an extraordinary overtones and echoes. So the human beings, which we consider primitive, um, have actually created a sense of this. So imagine a group of people spread in the cave, singing to each other and the cave. It's like a symphonic uh, arrangement, which feeds and gives someone a recovered closeness, a sense of being, and womb-like reinsurance. So, as I said before, the music is best taught by imitation. This is from um, um, Alfonso the Wise, um, Cantigas de Santa Maria, and he has the most amazing um, images of uh, musicians from all the known world, mostly from um, Mediterranean, but also from Africa as well, like, you know, the, the first musicians here. And um, uh, the musicology said, oh, it's very strange. It's um, not really normal because they're really inspired by Persian and um, Altaic, um, Central Asian and Arab music. And that was the sound of Middle Ages. Later, it was corrected to be the sort of, you know, like um, Gregorian chant. But the musicians from all over the place would play to each other, imitate, learn, and enrich the textures, vocabularies, and the way of approaching an instrument. So, mirroring as one of the fundamental functions of humanity, now being heavily, heavily attacked through war games and, you know, knowledge of psychology to create humans who are not um, um, responsive to each other, but are dependent on the machines. But here in this, it's one of my favorite pictures friend sent it to me, and we don't know from where it came, but it doesn't matter. While the parents are shopping, the children are doing the most primeval possible thing, connecting, mirroring, exploring. And so um, the responsible science, it's warning us about losing the sense, not anymore just uh, attention span, which is destroyed, and compassion because a child sees several billions of distractions without remorse in the games um, while they are four or five, but we are losing the mirroring, which is a biological necessity and um, 
the metaphorical thinking is the moment when the aha of the metaphor comes. It's where the two hemispheres are joined. This is an integration. So this kind of things are very important. And here, the mirroring loop, you don't know who is mirroring whom anymore. It's just, and of course, the first thing the child does imitates what it was given to me. It's a way of growing and imitating the grown-ups. But here, the little boys are completely integrated into the significant ritual of this tribe and are part of it from the very beginning of their childhood. So they are learning, imitating, and being together. So, migration of skills and ideas, Italian tarantella pizzica and Egyptian czar, rituals of women helping women for over thousands of years. And it's um, research we have done over years. So, the reason I'm bringing this up and putting it here is to point out and celebrate women wisdom holders. Not philosophers, philosophers, philosophers like Socrates maybe, who is, uh, you know, complete, but like um, 19th century Western philosophers and the whole myths, mystique and the philosophy is the greatest um, uh, achievement of the mind it's deeper and more comprehensive and completely um, orientated towards the community and the people than internal knowledge experienced. This is a contemporary wisdom holder. They are always present in every society. There is a natural part of life, just like trees grow or season comes. There is always a wisdom holder. And sometimes it will be a grandmother or a neighbor and so on so forth. This particular wisdom called the contemporary is um, celebrating someone's a child just born and welcoming it into the world. So it's not only the departures, not only the traumas, not only the, the difficulties of the community, but also the depths of holding arrivals, celebrations, understanding the people, not on a superficial or commercial level, but on what they really need. This is, um, a prehistoric fresco of women uh, dance after the, the death. And it's performed in Apulia, which is also the, the place where the Tarantella dance comes, even today. And uh, with, with a similar outfit, woman has worn scarves in Mediterranean in many cultures um, with the pride. So it's not just uh, an Islamic thing. It is um, part of um, costuming or habits or, or charm or, or fashion or whatever. But this fresco is very, very poignant and beautiful. And um, Dionysian mysteries have part of them which um, was only dedicated to women. They would go into the Parnassus if they were in that area by themselves and just play the drums and uh, sing and be able to shout or cry or say something beautiful, be just with themselves for themselves. And that is a continuation of the prehistoric um, traditions when women have done that and they're 
recordings of that um, uh, in a way appropriated into the uh, Apollos cult um, because the, even the Pythia, who was the priestess of the Python, which was eradicated and replaced with uh, uh, Apollo, has to be called Pythia. She has to go through the ancient ritual. Otherwise, there is no content. There is no ceremony. So um, Tarantella uh, dance, healing, gathering together is um, comes from Taranto, which uh, maybe my, no, I thought it's the, oh yeah, we, oh, we changed the slide. Um, I better not do it. Um, it's that heel of Italy um, in inside, near the spider and then there is Taranto there, but it's all over Apulia and then Calabria and later Sicily and other places. And it is, there are three tarantellas. Tarantella, uh, the quarry, which is sort of the, the one which we know very fast, where uh, for played at weddings and the couples dance, but they are not touching because it's just courting dance. Then there is a um, capoeira like uh, uh, tarantella for men, and sometimes they really use the knives and revenge each other. And then there is tarantella pizzica, which um, is exclusively for women, where women help women. And um, the wisdom holder holds the space. Now it's fashionable to be um, ethnic. So the pop singers go into the trance themselves. They scream, they lie on the floor. And because they have not studied and they have never met a wisdom holder in their lives. So quietly, usually in the corner, and I would show you, I have a picture of it. But um, the future wisdom holder is chosen either by the relative who is also a wisdom holder or circumstances or whatever, and carefully trained because through music and through songs, the actual uh, reconciliation with the problem, healing of the problem takes place. And the Tarantella wisdom holder, musician, she knows sometimes thousand songs in languages she doesn't know, Aramaic, um, Albanian, old Albanian, even African and so on and so forth, but she would know what certain tones can do. And she has more training than a doctor or a psychoanalyst. She can assess the need of person, but they would do it together until the right tone or the right rhythm is found. And then the person would go through their process, but not left alone, but um, help. This picture is very interesting. Here is a Central Asian woman. This is in Afghanistan. And the only time where you can recognize the wisdom holder um, wearing something different is as celebrations. And it's the woman in the back with the white scarf. And you see, how serious and um, contained she is while the people are singing. And this is very important. And um, this is Egyptian Zah, which is almost identical um, to Tarantella process. And um, a woman wisdom holder holds the space. You see, she's watching the woman who is in need to express or find solution for herself or just being able to share what is on, what is burdening her. But look at the attitude and the attention of the wisdom hall. She is not going into trance. She is holding the space so the woman in safety can 
go to the most transpersonal part of herself, but with the knowledge she will be brought back and help to integrate into her community or in her situation, which might be very hard, through being held like that. Here is a, a Roman principle from Pompeii in which the person who has been through a journey and now is resting is being carefully watched by the wisdom hall. So this is too much to read and I don't want to, but just quickly inducing feeling of uh, infinitude, um, giving a person taste and relief, um, inducing laughter. They um, have found, they and really um, Farabi and Ibn Sina, um, even seen one of the greatest uh, doctors in history, uh, have found then in the therapeutic process, the, the sound is um, very helpful. Uh, this is uh, um, even seen as uh, more uh, biology. I, I couldn't find uh, the sound, but he had a 12 uh, chapters dedicated to sound healing in his encyclopedia of um, health processes. And um, at Diveri in um, um, Turkey, in Anatolia, at Shiva's, there is a mosque, which was a mosque and the hospital. And um, it had a syncretic uh, arrangement of extraordinary um, decoration, um, and it was outside. And in the hospital, they practiced this Ibn Sina type of music. And the, the woman, the um, princess, or whatever is the right term, um, built the hospital, and her husband built the jami. But she asked the sculptors and the people to create a doorway which would be the emblem of this healing process. It, uh, the jami didn't have a minaret. The tallest thing was the door and she wanted it to be outside. Inside, it's very plain. So whoever passes by, anybody who is not allowed or can't come into the jami could be touched by this emblem of care, which came from the musical therapy within the psychiatric hospital she built. Um, there is a contemporary um, heart surgeon, uh, Bingur Sunez in Turkey, Sunmez in Turkey. I'm reading it on a piece of paper next to my computer just to note. Um, after giving the surgery the next day, he actually plays the music to the patients. And I have interviewed them and the musicians and the patients said, when they heard that, they knew that they will be okay and they would survive. And um, it is um, most um, generous and extraordinary considering how mechanized and um, seemingly scientific and practical the hospitals are, and some of them have to be, but then a head surgeon would do that. I think it's very important. Now, medical report summaries about the electronic impact of sound and its side effects. So um, it is almost unbelievable that somehow we are now addicted and allow first very same beat, which was by neuroscience discovered, then um, kind of 
influence the heart to go slightly faster and it's addictive when it's not there, people feel lost and depressed. So this beat is now in every taxi, in every hotel, in every supermarket, on every little telephone. And this is the emblem of globalization. But not only that, the level of sound has really injured the hearing of children and particularly of uh, musicians. There are so many deaf musicians because the sound was unbelievably, um, and because they have lost the art of touching the heart with a, with a simple song, they have to bombard and attack the body to have any sensation from anybody. The scientists have made experiment with the um, car speakers, because some people play them so loud, and at certain point, the car speaker actually destroys a glass. This is just what you do. So imagine what it does to hearing or to internal self. So there are whole generations which are shattered. And the little children, when they hear that sound, this is the instinctive reaction. They are trying to protect themselves. But afterwards, through brainwashing and through culture, they think it's cool and hip. So, whatever we can do. But we play music acoustically. We encourage people to learn instruments. And um, I just want us to go through this poem quickly because um, so much uh, of wisdom holding and particularly in Asia and also in Africa and in China, China is Asia, but in, in uh, Central, um, are held in teaching stories. And there is a, a mystique, a contemporary mystique, then there are many levels of meaning and the clever people would get to the meaning, but the unclever people won't. But really, the meaning is always there. It's integrated into it. So I have put it in green and bold, and it's um, about music. And it's integrated into this part of Atta's poem uh, of the birds, Parliament of Birds, but it's just a bit about the phoenix. So the phoenix is an admirable and lovely bird which lives in Hindustan. It has no mate and lives on low. So this is important. It beaks, and now I have this uh, people's, uh, oh, here they are. <laughs> it beaks, which is very long and hard, is pierced like a flute, which nearly a hundred holes. Each of those holes gives out a sound, and each sound is a particular secret. So, Now it doesn't want, by moving the pictures, now I can't, oops, ah, it came, okay. something wrong where maybe I should put the pictures there. I wish there is someone who knows what to do. Ah, oh, there it is. Sometimes he makes music through the halls and when the birds and fish hear his sweet plaintive notes, they are agitated and must, uh, most ferocious beasts, um, I'm constantly moving the image to be able to read, um, most ferocious beasts, oops, really, I'm so sorry. 
not possible to do it. Just blocked my... Okay, you're back. And now I, I went back, but it does forward, forward, forward. Okay. A philosopher once visited this bird and learned the secret of music. The phoenix lives about a thousand years and knows exactly the date of his death. When the time has come, gathers a quantity of palm fronds and leaves and distort among the leaves, utters plaintive sounds, the sounds which reach. From the opening of his beak sends forth varied notes, and at this it's drawn from and it's drawn from the depths of his heart. This lament expressed the sorrow of death, and the phoenix trembles like a leaf at the sound of his trumpet. The birds and the bees draw near to assist in the spectacle. spectacle. Now they fall into bewilderment, and many die because their strengths fail. So the poet, the Atta, knows the power of music. He's sharing it with us. He's giving it to us. The ferocious beasts are tenderized by it, while the phoenix still has breath. He beats his wings and ruffles his feathers, and soon both the fronds and the birds are reduced to living coal and then to ashes. But when the last spark is flickered out, a small phoenix arises from the ashes. So the sense, then the sound, and our commitment to sound, our acoustic um, respect towards the education which um, allows children to really just listen might be a hope for us. If not, at least our generation has been able to hear real sounds. I put these images in black and white so it's like a homage to our century. This is like as if we are looking it back as a, already as heritage because we have given ourselves not to listening anymore but just to the machines. Look at the intimacy and the sharing in this image. How close and how individual they this is in um, Turkey now, in um, um, ancient, now I forgot its name because I'm still struggling with the thing. Um, but it's uh, somebody um, gave thanks for being returned the hearing. It's this um, place where um, Galen used to be in Turkey. You know that there is Esculapium. I just forgot the name of the town. It it's, starts with P, I think, if ever. Not important. The part important is then the people celebrated the return of their hearing. And now, at the end, I have added something into this as a postscript. Um, we did a play about Tarantella uh, in 2006 and 7 um, in San Francisco based on the research and um, but in the view and researching also the immigrant cultures in the view that some of these traditions have come with people and cultures into the new world. So we created a play 
in which a young woman who was thoroughly trained by the wisdom holder, who has more um, medical education than any doctor, is now working in a hospital as an orderly because she's an immigrant, where she meets a first Italian doctor where the whole community saved for him to be able to serve their community because some members died because they were not admitted. So they all saved, they all educated. So there was a charge, but he thought, oh, she's just a peasant girl and she was proud. But there was a um, conspiracy because the hospital was uh, not working properly. Uh, uh, the, the American doctors decided to pin all the blame on young Italian doctors. And um, when the inspector come, he will be punished and they will be saved. But she, they didn't know that she knows English. She overheard, she gave the patients which they gave the overdose and um, extra thing to, to vomit when nobody saw it in the night. And the person survived. And the next day when the doctor discovered that he was being set up, he had a, a life crisis. He just walked through the, his community, really not knowing, and he bumped into the, um, he bumped into the Tarantella ritual, not knowing that it's only for women. I'm trying to start it. There, he allowed himself to move and to call out. The woman's frenzy, infectious, was conducted through his being like electricity. For the first time, he, un he saw a patient from the inside. He understood how she felt. He began to identify with the woman's pain, and it opened doors for him to access his own pain. She turned her attention to the young doctor, the inexperienced patient. He didn't know that this dance was traditionally danced by women. With her trained eye and her typical seriousness, she helped him through his journey. She was not a young girl who may have fancied the doctor, but an ancient priestess in a young body, forgetting her personal self. He had no choice. For the first time in his life, the young doctor allowed himself to follow the promptings of his insides. The gyrations of his inner movements, movements awoke demons of revenge. Faces of people who had betrayed him, but also images of distant lands and people. Ulysses, unknown Buddha, fantastic species of trees and animals. He went right into the core of his loneliness right where it hurts. The tarantella was tweaking his pain, bringing it up, tweaking the pain, bringing it up. His pain was boiling, boiling up, rearing like a wild Mustang. He had to hold on to it as it kicked and bucked. He had to hold on. He held on through the boil. And then the tarantella allowed him an imperceptible rest. But the music called him, called him to return, called him back in. Let's go back in there again, deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper. All of his unknown parts gathered around, right in. He was relieved. His inner animal had been appeased, fed love. What was ugly now danced together with him, included. Sunlight filled his dark corners, scorching, bleeding, baking. 
All are one. All are one. He emerged from the dance together. A great, difficult job was done. No. So, every life could be a story, and everybody has a favorite song in their heart. So, let it be. And thank you. Thank you, Slobodan. Thank you, Slobodan. I'm very, very, very grateful. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Very Thank much. Thank you for sharing. Slobodan. Slobodan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dede. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Slobodan. Thank you, Slobodan. Thank you, Slobodan. Thank you, Slobodan. Thank you everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. This is our lives. I'm very grateful. Some time for uh, questions. Um, I'm open for questions. But yeah, it was it was great, a great talk, Sovereign. Thank you very much. It was very useful since I'm writing a book on art acoustics with a little bit of uh, also music and so on, and it was quite helpful. Uh, it was good that um, you allowed me and everybody to, to record the, the, the lecture. It was very good. I have a question. If you can remember, you showed an image. Uh, actually, it was the first one with people um, performing, uh, I think, a dance in Africa, uh, people with long hats. Uh, do you remember this image and uh, where is it? What, what country? Um, I, I would research, I can't... Um, I, I can send you an email later and I'll give you time for... You. I, for I might email. not, but if I do, I'll tell you. Okay, great. Great. Well, I, I'm, finish, I, I'm finishing an article that uh, um, speak about uh, some, some things like that. I, I will be send you the article. Great. I, lo I love your thinking very much. Well. Well, I, I really don't have a question, but it's more like I would like to hear you on something. Uh, can it be? <laughs> yes. Because uh, um, part of the process, you are speaking about imitation, right? Um, and imitation is like, it's like you were saying, it's the first uh, step uh, through learning. Um, but sometimes the, the imitation gives place to copy and uh, part of the creative process. I, I remember this because I, I have a, a friend that she's a poet and she has a, a, a part of, a, a, the, the, of the poem is, a, but this is regarding to, to racism, but I remember this. A part of the, the poem is beware of the gap between ignorance and racism. And uh, I just remember this because uh, this can also be applied to, to the creative process, right? So be aware of the, the, the gap between imitation and copy. And uh, I would like to hear uh, a th your thoughts on this, uh, with the imitation and with the copy applied to the creative process, and on this case to music and sound. Well, um, you know, it's it's personal, so there is nothing universal about it. But um, the copy is a poverty. It's it's the poor person who has to do that. But some of them become rich because they have stolen. <laughs> and um, I have um, experienced that many times in life. People have made the whole things out of something they have stolen. But the people who make things 
Take you know, you know, you both uh, do things, you draw. So what if somebody does a similar drawing, you would next day draw same or something else. Mm -hmm. So, and um, if one enters the, the question of ethics, how bad that person must feel unless they're completely uh, oblivious, then they have not, you know, they have stolen someone's baby. So, but on another hand, I'm always saying originality is completely relevant, irrelevant, all my language, um, because um, sometimes people are facetious, they have to be original. But they're human, similar ideas happen, they're not stolen, they're just different expression of the same notion. So striving for originality is also stealing oneself away from being together, from being human, from being just with other people. And um, so I completely don't mind if my drawing look, somebody says, oh, that reminds me, well, I never see that. But for, for learning, for young people, sometimes to copy, not always, because some school wants to copy, 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 no. But sometimes to copy or be free with it, particularly, you know, when I have worked with few children, not to insist to be the same, but like to start. And, and it just really depends. But your questions really comes from, I feel I could be completely wrong. Help me. Um, it really comes from the ethical sense. It comes like, and probably in your work, you, you see such things. So how is one to, to react? And um, I mean, if it's um, someone who is giving um, what I call the feeding hand and they are encouraging such a behavior, what can one do but just, you know, you know the three monkeys. I always say there should be the fourth one. You know, yes. <laughs> Slobodan, um, I wonder if you would speak to uh, um, the notion of silence. Um, the standard feature of music is silence. And, uh, and there's a, there are two problems that I see in contemporary society. One is the wall-to-wall -wall sound wherever you go. And even in hospitals, it's just a horrible sound. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and also amplified music is, is seamlessly loud. And it's like this wall that comes oppressively towards you as you turn up the volume instead of acoustic fingers reaching towards you. But I, I just wonder if you'd speak to silence a bit. Well, I'm completely silent about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I mean, you were so articulate and actually, um, the best uh, rendering of Moon Moonlight Sonata is yours because you played it so slow. There's <laughs> so much silence in it. And, and I played, I lost it, if you can send me again, but I played it a lot at, at rehearsal because it gives people the space. And, and some of them said, but I know this music. I said, of course you know it, but look how it is played. So your sensitivity to, to silence, it's from someone who really understand the music. But um, culture is given up on it. But in our intimate work, you know, in our performance, we nurture that, but not direct. We nurture silence as a byproduct of the deep, expression, the breath, the listening. So if we insist on silence, then that becomes like um, 
if the silence happens because it's the fruit of something which has been emerging in this, this world, then it has its place. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, um, is it, do you think, and is it the most eldest instrument, the flute? And uh, it comes also in the syrinx and the god pan that plays mm -hmm. the flute. So do you think this is the eldest um, instrument and this sound is connected to some ancient antique well, um, connection. Actually, at Fernando's conference uh, a few years back, um, Tolga came, and uh, Tolga has an um, interesting um, hypothesis of the first instrument being the bow. Because, and so then the, um, the jaw harp uh, and different instruments. So the bow is uh, probably the older than the flute. Okay. But the flute um, um, has a tremendous space in the history. And of course, those flutes which um, I put there are considered the oldest. And um, because it is a call, call, call. So it's um, birds. Uh, here on the sea, there are so many birds and they're calling in so many ways. And you can see that the, the ancient people just begin to call first the animals, you know, in shepherd's culture, but also just to call each other, to call, to call, to call the unknown. So calling and the voice so was also a form of calling, calling in the cave, echoing. So the flute I always see as an extension of call. Yeah. But if it is the oldest or next to the oldest, it really doesn't matter. People want it always to make sound. Thank you. Um, I think uh, uh, Fernando, you reconstructed some flutes, or oh, it was a drum. Oh, he's not here. Okay. The, the archaeologist. And of course, drums too. But maybe you make a flute. Try to make one. I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then call, and I open the window and see. If it, I can hear it from Tuscany. <laughs> or maybe I can just go to Istanbul and from walk on the Modas street and then maybe you can hear me and then you go out your window. And yeah. then I will know where you live. <laughs> I will call you with the flute. <laughs> what? But thank you for your question. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Vaughan, can I just say something? Uh, yeah. I, I was deeply, deeply moved by what we've seen. Uh, when you showed the list of certain, I think it must have been certain streams of music that affect different emotions, like they can produce fear or anxiety or various, if you had a list of emotions, it reminded me very much of the Greek modes. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was younger, I. I really wanted to try and find because the, the Greek modes because I felt the Greeks really got it somewhere and they really had a power which has been lost. And I think also the other thing I felt as watching today is I had this terrible feeling of loss because as you say, we're so bombarded by sound. And the only other thing I wanted to reflect on is I, I loved the dance. I, that, that was so powerful, that dance and the movements of that man really affected me. So I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the experience. Thank you. Oh, well. And um, I can send you that list. I just didn't want to read it mm. because that also might just give you a sense. Thank yeah. you.
Thank you. Next few days because I have uh, Lynette's uh, email, so that will be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But just lovely to see you both, really. It is lovely, lovely to see, see you. you as well. Lovely. Well, Slobodan Fernando says there is a problem with the, the sound. So that's why he couldn't reply to you. No problem. Uh -huh. it's, it's all good. I believe now it's very, it's better. The sound now is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that everybody wants more from you, Slobodan. See, it was so great that <laughs> uh, uh, for me, as I, I told you, first of all, I'm very glad to see you even in a screen at the distance. And I'm grateful for this day, for this lecture. It was very, very good for me. And um, let's hope we have some more uh, examples of these lectures. It was really great to, to spend. I was writing all this afternoon of the, on my new book this afternoon, and this was refreshing. Very good. Very, very good. Um, regarding the, the, if I can say something, add something regarding the, the oldest instruments, of course, it's very difficult to find out what is the oldest instrument, what is the oldest symbol. This is very difficult. But of course, even the bow or the flute, they were uh, probably among the two oldest instruments. But I believe that uh, human beings uh, already. Uh, born equipped with at least two instruments, the human voice and, uh, and clapping hands. This is percussion. So we are all, everybody, all of us, we born uh, equipped with these two instruments and uh, the early musical behavior, I believe, and also other codes, uh, ethno ethnomusicologists and so on, they think the same, that uh, music began with uh, vocalizations before a constructed uh, musical instrument, mm, I, also with percussion. I think so. But uh, what was I forgot the name of the person, a very nice young man who reconstructed those flutes and played them. Uh, ah, in Tumar, it was a French guy, Etienne Safa. Yeah, he. Yeah, 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 yeah. He really uh, played. There were nice flutes, and uh, I have one of, of, of them. And also, you remember probably Dragos Georgiou, which was uh, in the, the other conference uh, about a year ago, year and a half. He reconstructed uh, two drums, two play drums, and they, they brought to me. I, I'll show you one of them. If you can remember this one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, show them. I show, yeah. I show both. He has yeah. another one from me, but now it's difficult to travel. So I will have to wait for the. The next example. Great, great. Hi, Slobodan. It's Pixie here. Hello, hello. Hello, my dear. Hello. I wanted to. Sh oh, there was. There's a number of things I want to say. Good morning, and it's really good to see you and to be in cyberspace together. And then um, there were a couple of reflections I had um, because I'm, I'm doing, uh, like really listening from, um, well, through the lens of a lot of. Vedic texts that I've been reading and from a more of a, a yogic perspective mm -hmm. and and from a yogic perspective they they talk about um, our, our sense of hearing is the last thing to leave us when we when we graduate when we pass over and then and so there's a practice called yoga nidra which is using this concept of pratyahara where you it's a sense withdrawal until mm -hmm. you're just listening and so so one of the one of the tenets is an idea called shunya, which means to deeply listen. And then shunya is related to the concept of zero, which is also from an old Vedic concept, which is sunya. So it's, um, you know, the, the idea of everything and nothing, the zero and the deeply listening is, is very related. So, so it's interesting to hear you talking about sound because I've been working a lot with mantra and then how mantra is really using frequency and then even you know in old texts where sound is actually used to um, affect um, material so it can actually change materiality using intention and sound and repetition 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm really interested in in all of that, and I just wanted to share that I'm kind of on a similar um, journey to understand that by using mantra and um, and then also aligning oneself cosmologically because because every planet has a frequency and and electromagnetism. So the you know the Earth has a sound, and the and the moon has a certain frequency so even aligning ourselves our, our spiritual nature through sound and then um i was list, i've been studying the bhagavad gita and one of the teachers is was talking about sound as as being the thing that connects the worlds which is frequency anyway so that's things that are interesting to me and then when you guys were talking about in, instruments i wanted to show you this this is something that I used to make. It's called an ocarina. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So we used to make, when we were hippies, we, we, we used to travel the world and make instruments, drums and didgeridoos, and this, these ocarinas. So they say this is one of the oldest flutes. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. Deep one. Yeah. Oh, we made hundreds. We made hundreds of those and used to sell them at festivals and markets and things like that. Well. And then I had one more, one more thought I wanted to share. When you guys were talking about, um, I, I'm trying to remember the context of um, of copying and imitation. One of your friends was talking about that, and then your response made me think of something that Brian Eno speaks about, which is a concept he calls seniors where he's saying in any, you know, we have this idea of what genius is. And then there's certain people in the world who, who are kind of like the fruits, the fruits of the scene. And they're the ones who, who display or, or emit the genius. And his, his idea is that nothing comes on its own, that it's all, it's all, it's like mycelium. Like, um, so there's a genius which is, produces the genius, but it comes from the community of thought or, or the zeitgeist that, that we're all connected to, which includes imitation, but there's also transmission. So anyway, I, I like the way he talked about that, the seniors. And that's all I have to say. I'm really happy to see you. <laughs> yes, excellent. And it was lovely to see your black cat too. <laughs> oh, that black cat is my hero. I love him so much. <laughs> Important, yeah. Great, great. Well, Mr. Borden, I have a question. Mm -hmm. But it's not after all this music questions, it's more about the wisdom holders. Mm -hmm. I was really interested in them. So is it necessarily the eldest woman in the group is the wisdom holder or, or it's a spe special trait? Special trait. Uh -huh. Not necessarily the oldest woman. No. But but the group decides, right? Or how, how does she appear? Uh, it's it varies in many many ways. Um, it usually appears sometimes even from childhood. Mm. And there is a person, a girl, who looks at things differently observes things, already gives advice. So it's recognized in that way. But also sometimes um, people insist on someone, say, well, you're always so helpful, you know, you should be official um, wisdom holder because they're official and like in Central Asia, in, Sebastian and other, they actually have a community has a point in them to be that. Mm. But sometimes it's just spontaneous. And, and sometimes it's also shared. When I was um, um, talking to the Tarantella women, you know, yes, there was one who was, um, but she wasn't exclusive. Somebody else would come with a, with a suggestion, and it wouldn't be like, oh, no, no, I'm the one. No, no, it was immediately absorbed. It was part of the of the flow, and mm -hmm. 
So it's, it's more organic rather than an institution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have seen some children who are really wise. And that was not just intelligence, but also their sense of survival and the way how they coped. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And I love the sculpture behind it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> my treasures. <laughs> wow. Great. So? Well, yeah. So there will be one more. So if anybody once uh, another one there will be one in january three weeks later right yeah yeah lovely mm. so, so I, and um i'm not very good with emails but um, any of you if you send me an email or if you want something or um, you know just please do, and I would respond, maybe not instantly, but you know, within reasonable time. Thank and you, Slobodan, for, for being here with us. So good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you, yeah. See you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank, hey, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank thank you very much. Thank I, you very I much. The last words you told. Let it be. Yeah. <laughs> your your lecture with let it right. be. Good that bye. reminds me of the Beatles. <laughs> uh, the philosophy of pop music. Be ready for it. My next book uh, will talk about it also. <laughs> <laughs> Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Until next time. Thank you, Thank you Sloboda. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. You. Thank you. you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. 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 B